Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, welcome back to the EGR virtual series webinar. Um, I'm Fergus and I look after the event content for EGR. As always, there are a few housekeeping notes before we begin. So should you wish to ask a question, please go to www.slido.com and use the hashtag EGR virtual series. And you should be able to see these details on your screen now. Um, the recording of this webinar will, as always, be sent around to all that attendees once it's over, so you will be able to listen back to anything you've missed. Um, so this week's webinar is entitled Revolutionising the Player Experience with Pay and Play. And with me today, we have uh, Vasily, who's Director of Gaming, and Nick Tucker, who is Head of Sales, both at Trustly. And then further down the line, um, we'll also be joined by Ariel Reem, who's CEO at Genesis Global, and Alberto Bertoni, who's CCO at Soft2Bet. Uh, I'll let themselves introduce themselves properly um, and hand over to Nick and Vasily, but just before that, there will be a short 40-second uh, intro video. Uh, there is no audio with this, so please don't panic if you don't hear anything. Um, and if you would like any additional information of what the guys discussed this afternoon, there is also a handout available um, in the handout section of your taskbar. So with that, uh, we'll move straight on um, and have a good session. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to, to this week's EGR uh, virtual series webinar. We will be talking today about uh, the pay and play product and how it revolutionized the gaming industry. My name is Vasily, I'm Director of Gaming at Trustly. I'm here today with my colleague Nick, who is our Head of Sales, and two of our esteemed guests, Ariel Reem, the CEO of Genesis Global, and Alberto Pitoni, the CCO of Soft2Bet. Uh, over to you, Nick. Thanks, Vasily. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, just to give you a bit of a, an overview of what we're going to be going through today, um, Vasily and I are going to walk everyone through a short slide deck on pay and play, how the product works, what's good about it from a player and operator perspective, just so everyone has a good understanding of what the product is helping to achieve. Um, but then we'll, we'll hand over to um, Alberto and Ariel for a kind of detailed Q&A uh, trying to get a merchant's perspective on the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, regarding pay and play. So do stay tuned, um, post the slide deck, because uh, the meat of the uh, session is going to be talking to Ariel and Alberto to get a, an operator perspective and to discuss broader trends uh, within the industry at the moment. Uh, we'll then open up an audience Q&A, so please do submit any questions you've got throughout the presentation uh, or during the Q&A between ourselves, Alberto and Ariel, use Slido to do that and we'll do our best to answer the questions um, at the end of the, the end of the seminar today. So um, thank you everyone. Back over to you Vasily to um, kick things off with the slide deck. Thank you Nick. So uh, yeah you can move to the next slide. Uh, uh, I'd like to start talking a little bit uh, about pay and play, what pay and play is. Uh, for the ones that, that don't know, Trustly is a direct bank payment provider that allows instant uh, payments directly from your bank account. Uh, and and uh, our product uh, has been very popular with the gaming industry uh, since the company was founded in 2008. Uh, but in the last uh, years, we were thinking on how we can further enhance the user experience with our product and its capabilities. And we created Pay and Play. Pay and Play is a product that combines the capabilities of uh, Trustly that are uh, instant deposit KYC uh, information collection and uh, instant and frictionless withdrawals. Uh, and uh, with this product, we have managed to change the way how uh, 
players register on gambling websites. As you know, today, uh, uh, or, or up until pay and play was introduced, people were filling long uh, registration forms and providing uh, different documentation in order to verify their accounts. But with pay and play, as we will explain in this presentation, that is possible to be done in a very seamless and frictionless way, just by doing a deposit directly from your bank account. Uh, Super, next thanks us. So yeah, just to kind of recap on what Vasily's talked about there, there's three key benefits that we call the, the magic of pay and play. Um, the, the foundation of what it's doing, why it's so well respected by players and operators, is it makes it very easy for a new player to register and sign up on a new casino, sports book, or any other merchant site. They're not having to fill out information manually, click through to a cashier, place a deposit, then upload ID documentation to get their withdrawal we're able to streamline a lot of those processes. So the first pillar is the fact that it boosts acquisition. Um, it does that by combining registration and deposit, which offers a much better conversion of people visiting the site for the first time uh, than you would get through a traditional sign up. So that's the first pain point you look to solve. Once you've acquired that player, um, they often become a very loyal player. The, the reason being is they know with operators that offer pay and play, they're going to be able to get their winnings back to their bank account in a lot of countries almost instantaneously. So that's a huge draw for the consumer when they know they're not going to have to faff around providing paperwork in the first instance. They're not going to have to wait for a number of days to get the money back in their bank account so they can use it in their day-to-day -day lives. So we found that players have a huge amount of loyalty to operators that offer this pay and play concept and instant withdrawals and they will spend the majority of their kind of gambling budget on a monthly basis with operators that offer that functionality. So you, you engender a, a big franchise of very loyal players. And also, uh, more important than ever in the current regulatory environment, with operators under increasing scrutiny, it enables operators to stay compliant. The reason being is it's a very secure payment method with low fraud and almost no chargebacks, enabling people to make a payment from their bank is very hard to dupe versus cards and other payment methods. It's a closed loop payment method, um, so it's very streamlined in that sense. And because we provide KYC information when the player signs up, when they make deposits or request withdrawals, the operator is able to feel very comfortable that they know who their players are. So it's great for you know, fulfilling initial and ongoing KYC uh, requirements. Next slide, please. So, it's not just Vasily and I who like to extol the virtues of uh, pay and play. Uh, luckily, there are over 100 brands uh, across Europe uh, operating the pay and play uh, business model using the pay and play product. Our primary focus being Sweden, Finland and Estonia, but working in other markets as well. Um, so it's really you know, becoming a, a new normal or an industry standard in uh, markets where bank transfer is popular with consumers. Uh, and we're continuing to grow that going forward. I think I'm handing back over to Vasily now. Oh, yes. no. No, it's, my, it's uh, me, Vas. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in terms of uh, how you can integrate pay and play, there's different models that our operators can work with. Um, the, the best iteration of this for the consumer and the merchant is what we call pure pay and play. Now, pure pay and play is when an operator chooses to make Trustly the only payment method on their site. So, we become the sole registration, login, deposit, and payout method for the consumer. Um, now that's a big jump traditionally for a lot of people to have a relationship so deep with one payment provider that they're willing to engender that amount of trust. But there's a number of huge benefits in doing this. One, from a player perspective, it means they're able to register and resume login very, very quickly without having to remember um, email address or password. They're able to access their money back to their bank account instantly. Uh, and more importantly, from an operator perspective, it enables them to run a very lean operation. Because there's only the one payment method and they're getting KYC information throughout the process, they're not having to have huge support teams dealing with queries around withdrawals, dealing with multiple payment methods. So it's very lean um, in terms of operating costs for the operators. Um, Vas, is there anything you'd like to add on, on Pure or kind of talking about hybrid the other way we do this? Yes, I mean, uh, as Nick mentioned, Pure is the most popular implementation of pay and play because it's frictionless, it's simple, it's, it's neat and uh, 
since we introduced pay and play product, uh, the pure pay and play version has uh, been bringing the biggest uh, amount of success uh, because it's a closed loop payment. The users don't need to remember their their uh, usernames and passwords. All they need to have is uh, their e-banking credentials that they use in general when they're transferring money, regardless of, of, of gambling activities. The KYC process uh, works in the same way. Uh, the payouts are uh, very simple uh, and, and done uh, in a one-click way, so without any uh, uh, friction. Uh, and we will, a uh, little bit later on, be explaining uh, more about it and showing you the whole user journey, so you will be able to understand how this works. But I want to talk about hybrid, because uh, if you look at a uh, product like Pay and Play from the operator perspective, uh, not every operator and not every brand wants to create this uh, neat, stripped-down version of their website, and that doesn't work in every case. There are operators that have their, their main brands that operate in multiple markets, so doing uh, implementing pure Pay and Play wouldn't be uh, the most suitable for them. But if those operators want to, to still uh, use benefits of pay and play as a product, uh, for them we created the hybrid pay and play. So hybrid pay and play is slightly different to, pay, to pure pay and play because in, uh, instead of having Trustly as the only payment registration uh, and login method, you uh, can offer two choices to your player that come to your website, offering them regular or, or standard registration flow filling the form and creating username and password, or offering them as an alternative registration with pay and play. And uh, that same goes with the login. When the players are returning to the website, they can, they can log in and deposit. So combining those two steps in one go with pay and play, or they can use username and password if they don't want to deposit. And uh, the, another important difference is that for hybrid pay and play, uh, the users are uh, able to uh, use all different payment methods in the cashier, not just Trustly. Uh, so uh, several uh, big brands have, or big operators have implemented hybrid version as well, and it does bring a clear difference in terms of revenue, of uh, the, in terms of uh, the number of converted on, uh, players and acquired players. Uh, so this is a good model for such operators that, that have major brands that they don't want to completely change. So, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, we're going to walk you through the whole user journey of Pay and Play to, to show in a little bit more detail how this whole process works. Uh, this is a, a website, a homepage of a gaming website that the player uh, comes to. And as you can see, it looks a little bit different than, than your regular uh, gaming website. You don't have username and password fields uh, or, or, or the registration forms to fill but you have this call to action button called deposit. So when the user clicks on that button deposit, what happens is, as you will be able to see on the next slide, uh, the trusty iframes opens up. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, this is completely different uh, than the usual user journey of the player because you are actually initiating a payment right from the home page. Trusty iframe is, is a widget that allows you to uh, select your bank and then in the next step, In the next step, you're entering your e-banking credentials. So those are, those are the same credentials that you use for your online banking. You enter those credentials and Trustly system in the background logs you into your e-banking. In order, obviously, for this to work, you need to authenticate uh, the, the login to your e-banking. In Sweden, they use bank ID as one of the, of the most popular methods to do that. And then uh, in the next step, you will be able to uh, see a drop-down menu with your bank account balances. And these are your bank accounts. Uh, our system is mirroring your e-banking system. So you are able to see different types of accounts that you have, like current or savings accounts. So you can choose and tell us where do you want to make this deposit from. So you are choosing one account and then in the next step, in the next step, you are uh, uh, selecting uh, the account and confirming the payment that you will authenticate. Uh, in this process, before we move to the next slide, uh, I would like to explain what happened in the background. 
the trusted system works in in, a, in that way that in such way that while you are doing this whole deposit flow as a player we are uh, collecting the KYC information from different sources Th that can be your bank that can be public registries in your country or other third party KYC providers Trustly is through our API in the background while you're doing as a user deposit sending this information to your uh, to the gaming operator in this case to Green Casino website and the Green Casino is creating a, uh, creating a verified player account on the player's behalf in the background. So once I confirm the payment, uh, if you could move to the next slide, please, and authenticate the payment, obviously with two-factor authentication, in this case, bank ID, what happens is that the player is, uh, next slide, please, that the player is prompted to a logged in state to the gaming website. And I wanna just uh, 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 stay on this uh, for a little while. What happened here is uh, that user led his uh, user journey on a gambling website by depositing uh, with Trustly. In the background, his player account was created by the operator with the KYC information provided by Trustly. This is verified KYC information. So this account is already verified. And after the deposit flow has been completed, as you can see in the top right corner of the screen, this player is logged in and his deposit of 200 uh, sec is uh, in his account balance. So this player can play right away, hence the name of the product, pay and play. And then uh, obviously th these are not all the benefits of pay and play, although I, I hope that you all agree that, that this is uh, making a user journey, the registration, verification, uh, much better than through the traditional gaming websites. But uh, uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, what happens when the user is returning to the website. So if the user uh, logs out, he doesn't want to play anymore, and then he'd like to return to the website. He doesn't need to remember any username and password or other credentials, only his e-banking credentials. The same way as he was entering the website for the first time. This time he will click on the button resume play in the, in the top right corner. And then, and then he will go through a similar flow as in the beginning, just with, with the exception that, that he will not need to complete, to do a deposit if he doesn't want to. So if I was playing and I still have balance, when I close my computer and then I return in the evening to continue playing, I'm just gonna log in with my e-banking credentials. So you can, you can move to the next uh, slide. It's a very similar process. If I want to deposit during that process, I can do that. If I don't, I will just use those credentials to log into the website. In the background, again, when I'm entering my e-banking credentials, Fastly is sending the KYC information to the operator, to the gaming operator in order to identify whether this player is a new or an existing user. In case this is a new user, the system of the operator will bring up the player account of the player and log him in. So uh, once this process is completed, if you can go to the next slides, uh, as you see, uh, uh, as you can see, the two-factor authentication is always in place. The user will be logged in. You can move to the next slide. Okay, you can see again that the player that the player is locked in. And then uh, this is another benefit of, of the pay and play, uh, the withdrawals. Uh, if you move to the to the next slide, uh, when I want to withdraw the money, this will be a very simple process without any friction, without the player uh, having to enter any uh, bank details or any additional information or, or as it is in the traditional gaming website, send passport copies or utility bills. All the player needs to do is to choose the withdrawal option, enter the amount and do one click, withdraw now. And uh, take into account that we know which bank account this player deposited from, Trustly is able to instantly send the money back to, same, to that same bank account. Uh, so uh, with the capabilities obviously of Trustly's product, instant withdrawals, and with this very simple withdrawal process, that is a closed loop one. This brings benefits both to the players, but also to the operator, because it, it removes the need for having uh, additional uh, fraud and compliance operations that, uh, that, that would happen if the user was attempting to do a withdrawal to a different bank account that is not verified. 
Thanks, Vasily. That was really useful. I think, you know, everyone on the call now has got a, an understanding of how the product works. And the nice thing was what we talk people through there is kind of the end-to-end -end journey of a new player in real time. So, you know, that could be a similar flow to, to new players at your casino, sportsbook or bingo site experience in real life. It genuinely is that quick to sign up, register, deposit, potentially win and have the winnings back in your bank account. Within minutes in most countries with most banks, once you get that success URL, you're able to, to check your online bank account and see the money's in there. If we go to the next slide, please, Georgina. So we don't want to just stop there. Trusty is a very innovative company. We, we uh, have hired some of the, the best minds in iGaming and we have lots of developers based at our HQ in Stockholm. So we were thinking to ourselves, how do we take this concept to the next level to further support our clients, uh, affiliates as well, and really uh, drive home and leverage the benefits pay and play offers both players and operators. Well, the, the next product development we've come up with is something called in banner pay and play. So the concept here is we bring the cashier of the operator to the affiliate site and enable the player to sign up on the home turf rather than being redirected with a number of clicks to the operator's site and potentially dropping off. They're able to successfully engage with, choose a bonus potentially, and register all on the affiliate site. So it really is a win-win for players, operators, and affiliates. From the player perspective, I'm able to see the best offers, see what interests me, see new games, new products, and sign up for it there and then. From an operator perspective, I'm super happy, especially if I work in marketing, because I'm able to engage with the potential pool of new players on the affiliate site or potentially anywhere else where this banner can be hosted and enable the player to sign up there and then. And from an affiliate perspective, you can imagine they're very happy because they're really increasing the conversion uh, on new registrations. Uh, the good news is um, it's available in mul multiple markets as well. So you're able to cast a, a broad net with this new technology. Yeah, I, I'd like just to add to that, uh, uh, as we are always trying to innovate at Trustly, apart once we created Pay and Play and it, it has become uh, such a major success, we were thinking of how we can solve other problems that, that uh, our clients have. And one of the major problems, you would all agree, I hope, is uh, the conversion of players or acquisition of players coming from the affiliate websites. And usually when you go to an affiliate website, you click on a banner, you are simply redirected to the operator's website. And there is a lot of, of uh, drop-off points uh, in that process. And usually less than 5% of the players that, that click on a banner on an affiliate website end up uh, being first-time depositors, which means registered players that have completed a deposit. So with in-banner product, as Nick mentioned, we are allowing the users to do a pay-and-play deposit and therefore register and become the fully converted player on top of the affiliate website before they are redirected to the operator's website. So once they do the pay and play experience on the affiliate website, they will end up uh, registered, verified and uh, depositing users in a logged in state to the operator website. And we believe that, that this can uh, truly uh, be uh, a new way of innovation and become another industry standard uh, uh, which will bring benefits to all the parties involved. Next slide, please, Georgina. So as Vasily and I touched on, you know, it really is a win-win for everyone involved. Um, benefits for operator, increased conversion, streamlined registration in UX, leveraging the pay and play functionality they have on their own site, but bringing that forward to the affiliate site. And the fact it's available in multiple markets means you're able to you know, attract new players um, everywhere, pay and play is available in, in terms of the market. And, and in, from an affiliate perspective, you know, it's fantastic because it offers an increased conversion on any banners they're creating, positions themselves as a, a kind of innovator and brand leader versus affiliate sites or other institutions that don't support this technology and builds up a, a really good database of loyal, regular players um, because they're playing on pay and play sites. You know, they have a good uh, lifetime value from an affiliate and operator perspective in terms of the quality uh, of the player that you're getting converted um, through pay and play and in banner pay and play. So, you know, we're really excited about this as, as, as another way we can support our operators um, going forward to, to help them continue 
growing and which are increasingly difficult and highly regulated markets. Um, next slide, please. Back to you. Yeah, yeah so uh, before I, I talk about the integration of, of, of in banner pay and play, I'd like, I'd like just to, to mention that uh, uh, the, the basic use case about in banner pay and play is improving conversion from the affiliate websites. But we are, we are thinking one step further, or a couple of steps further. Uh, and we would like to, to, uh, to share with you that, that the next step in in-banner pay and play implementation would be uh, combining the registration, deposit, and playing experience away from the operator's website. So if you think uh, it from, from a sports betting perspective, I'm a big sports betting uh, fan. Uh, if I'm on my favorite uh, website reading about the game, between Liverpool and Manchester United, and uh, there is a dynamic odds banner that will allow me to select the odds on one gaming website within that article, and allows me also to do a registration for a gaming website or just a, a login, bet placement, and deposit all on top of this, this same article on the affiliate website. It will uh, bring huge benefits to me as a player, and I will be able to continue reading my article after that. So this is one of the use cases, we call it in-banner betting, that can be implemented. Uh, others could be con combining the, the, the pay and play experience on top of affiliate websites together with playing a casino game or even uh, placing a lottery ticket uh, or using any other gambling product. So there is, there is a lot of innovation to come from that side, definitely. In terms of integration or development, operators really don't need to do uh, much take into account that uh, if they have pay and play integrated, uh, like the companies of our two guests today do, uh, they just need to, to select an affiliate that, uh, that has this in-banner uh, pay and play product implemented, and they can pretty much uh, go live uh, right after that. And Trustly is working very actively on, on, uh, with multiple affiliates uh, and operators and other partners involved uh, to launch this product, uh, and you will be hearing a lot uh, of positive news, I believe, in the upcoming weeks and months. Thank you very much, Vasily, for that comprehensive summary. Now, um, whilst Vasily and I are very passionate about Trustly and Pay and Play in general, uh, it, it, it goes without saying that we're nothing without our operators and clients that we love to work with. So um, it's time to kind of hand over and get to know Ariel and Alberto uh, a little bit better. So we'll move into the Q&A section of the session. So perhaps I can kick things off, guys, with a, with a question. Uh, you first, Ariel, and then you, Alberto. Could you um, give us a bit of an understanding of yourselves, your company, how you work with pay and play, uh, and just a bit of a background on your, on your kind of general operations? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, Genesis, as a company, we established at, back in 2014. We are an uh, international company working in different restrictions as well. Uh, Multi-brand strategy is one of our uh, main focal, I would say, marketing strategy from day one. Um, trying to enhance the player experience through different brands. We are operating through four licenses. We have five brands under pay and play. So quite a heavy customer for you guys. A fast growing company, I would say, but uh, if I will say the last word about the Genesis that is important is we are very much, I would say, a optimization and data driven company. We're trying to base our decision, not on guts feeling, not who is actually screaming louder. It's more about who's bringing the numbers to justify it. And, and it goes across all our organization. And we have a great team, young people, ambitions, and and yeah, pen play was one of the things that we it was very uh, I would say very clear that we need to go that road because it was innovation in in gaming in casino especially if we look at where it started. Um, and yeah, that's that's I would say uh, Genesis. Very nice. Thank you very much, Ariel. So over to you, Alberto. Hi guys, thank you very much for having me here in this uh, in this panel. It's very very good. Uh, uh, content so far. Uh, I mean, Soft2Bet is uh, a quite young company. I mean, we've been growing a lot in the past couple of, uh, of years. Uh, we started as a small casino operator, B2C, 
um, basically that was the focus at the beginning with uh, just a couple of brands uh, starting very very small operations by the idea of our founder uh, and then basically we developed on top of that I mean always keeping in mind that uh, the most important thing is to actually offer a perfect user experience for uh, for the end consumers so we're trying to be as uh, localized as you know as close to uh, what a customer wants in each and every country and we try to offer you know the the best options for uh, for payment payment providers uh, across the globe thank we you couldn't Alberto. Leave... Sorry. yes we could i thought you were finished please go ahead ah, okay okay no just uh, just one minute i wanted just to say that basically uh, the soft to bat group now has become also a B2B operator. So on top of uh, offering, you know, uh, B2C uh, services to our customers, we also offer B2B services to merchants. So our own platform is basically available uh, for all the operators that want to, you know, uh, make use of it and make use of uh, payment solutions like Pay and Play as well. Yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, I would like to, to dig a little bit deeper into your experiences with Pay and Play. Uh, uh, Ariel, you mentioned that you have five brands live. It would be it would be great to hear uh, what do you think were the main benefits so far from from the operator's perspective. And of course, uh, obviously, Alberto, we would like to hear from you as well. What has been your experience with our product? So. Um... If I need to go back to the first brand that we launched, it was a successful launch. Tech side, the product is there, it's ready. Not Nothing to be mature to or to be able to, over time, to stabilize. It's plug and play. Once you know how to plug it, it will work. Um, the product itself, we need to understand, it's, it's, a, it's approaching um, a specific type of players first. The, I would say the early adapter was those guys that do have bank and they do use it trying to find some, I would say, more uh, new ways to consume gambling to some extent. Um, so that was the early days. And then we saw more and more players, actually, specifically, I would say, in, in two main regions that we are uh, also operate in Sweden and in Finland. Those are the two places that we, we saw that this product actually uh, was able to gain momentum over time. Um, it's funny, I remember even the question when I asked you, Vasily, before we started, I asked you how this thing's going to work, because the guy can, the player can just simply press the button and take the money out, right? And, and I remember trying to understand, okay, what we need to adapt in terms of the operational perspective. From operational perspective. And, and it's a different model from an operational perspective. Definitely from a player perspective, we just give him the most, I would say, important and the most annoying part was ticked, the withdrawals. It doesn't need to wait for someone. It doesn't need to upload any KYCs, any documents. You simply just press the button and the money is out. So from operational perspective, now you need to ask yourself, okay, if before I was looking on players to see who's depositing more, now as, as it could be as a good indication to a big players that I need to give more attention to. Today you might find a small player that deposit all money just because it can money in, money out quickly, right? So it's a different model and it's took us some time to adjust our segmentation, our data, and to understand how does it works. Um, surprisingly, I knew that you told me back at the time that it has its own thickness. And yeah, I thought at the beginning it was a nice marketing speech, right? But over time I saw it, yeah, they're actually surviving um, uh, longer. Um, I won't say that the attrition is different. It's just that they are there over time. You see them after six, seven, eight months, they're still coming up. I think it's because of the sickness of, of first the product and then what you do with your brands. It's a combination of both of them together. So overall, we had a good experience with the pay and play product. We found it quite uh, seamless and easy. Um, we couldn't find so many questions coming from our players. So overall, it was a, a good experience from that. Um, if I might even add some hint of what the things that we, we need to take into account that it's very much depends on which territory you target. If you go to the UK, it's still not there, for example. Um, there are other markets that's slowly going into to this kind of, uh, I would say, new product or new way of doing gaming. And to some extent, we can say that even compliance-wise, that they are pushing to the same direction, allowing the customer to, to withdraw without revert withdrawal, for example. We saw it from UK lately. 
Um, so I will say that in, in pen play side, it's it's a it was a good innovation that started four years ago, four or five years ago from our point of view. It started basically two and a half years ago, but um, it still have a way to go. So this is definitely. The way I couldn't agree more. It's good that you mentioned uh, the, the stickiness of the product because obviously we are able, we are always analyzing the data and we are identifying. We have identified over the last five years uh, a very significant trend uh, of shifting the focus uh, among the players from traditional gaming websites to the to the websites that offer this type of uh, of product like pay and play. Uh, mm -hmm. But Alfonso, we'd like to hear your uh, your experience with with uh, pay and play. Tell us more. I mean, our our experience is very positive. I have to say. I mean, we currently run. Seven, well, 16 brands on uh, pay and play. Um, we target mainly Finland and Sweden, uh, basically in terms of uh, countries for, for, for pay and play, it's only uh, Finland and Sweden. And I mean, the experience is, is very good. I mean, what we, what we experience is a fantastic conversion rate uh, in terms of, uh, you know, registration to first deposit which is, you know, a very important uh, ratio. Uh, it simplifies a lot our KYC procedures, in particular in Sweden, where we offer pure pay and play uh, solution. Basically, you know, we don't really need to uh, offer any type of uh, username and password, like the old, uh, the old style uh, authentication. And that makes, you know, our uh, KYC much, much leaner and much, much easier, you know, for, uh, for the customer. And in general, I see that customers are very happy with it. So we, we are experiencing, you know, very good uptimes, you know, we don't really experience the downtimes with your solution. So overall, I mean, it's a very high quality product, I would say. Uh, of course, there are some things that I would, uh, kind of, uh, not improve, but I would make different. Uh, but I mean, th they are part actually of the product. So the fact, for example, that the withdrawals ratio is slightly higher than, uh, you know, uh, with uh, a username and password kind of in kind of uh, offering uh, is part of the product. Uh, but, you know, the benefit that you get out of the fact that you make it so much easier for the customers to actually uh, deposit and register and actually provide the KYC, it's uh, you know a fantastic drive for increasing your volumes and for really you know targeting a specific market in the in the best way. I mean, we see that customer when they have a choice to actually choose between a pay and play or non pay and play, they go for pay and play. Uh, and, you know, I mean, the, the results are really, really there for us. I mean, we're growing at, you know, very, very high rates. So, I mean, and a lot of this is due to, to the pay and play product. On, on that note, before I'm sure Nick has the next question, I just wanted to ask you from the perspective of, of being a white label provider, uh, do you see a lot of interest of your clients or, or the increased benefits of being a platform that can offer this type of product, does that help you as a B2B provider? I think that is the kind of first question that they ask if you offer a pay and play, you know. I mean, of course, if, if these customers are targeting uh, the countries where pay and play is strong, uh, I mean, because that's for now, I mean, that's maybe the only limitation about the pay and play is the fact that it's strong and available only in specific countries. So what I would like for the future is that uh, you know, not only pay and play becomes available in more countries, but it also becomes a driver in, in those countries. Like, a, you know, like in the same way that it became like in Finland, where to be completely honest, I would have never ex expected that because people were so, uh, you know, so used to the, to the usual bank buttons uh, in Finland and they made a transition to, to Trustly quite quickly. Uh, and that is quite surprising. So I would expect that, you know, uh, in countries that are very uh, bank oriented, like Finland and Sweden, uh, the, the results should be quite similar in the future. Thanks, Alberto. I think one thing worth noting with, with both your companies is you've really embraced pay and play. And there's some kind of UX and front end 
um, cashier optimization and design things that need to be taken into account to make this really successful. You know, hands up, we occasionally launch pay and play with some operators. And if you don't embrace it and think how you can really uh, live and breathe it in your site and incorporate it, it's not always as, as successful. But what I think you guys have been able to do is really think about the user journey and really leverage the technology in the best way possible across your brands. Um, Alberto, you, you mentioned you know, new countries for pay and play. Now, we know pay and play is primarily available in Sweden and Finland, also in the regulated market of Estonia, but it's quite a small country, so you know, perhaps not as strategically important for many operators. Also, it's available in a couple of other countries where regulation is kind of changing constantly, so let's not dwell on that too much. But if we think about open banking and bank transfer as a payment method becoming easier, and more in line with cards in, in terms of being able to authenticate a payment conveniently, maybe using biometrics in, in your banking app, such as the UK. Um, what other countries would, would you guys like to see pay and play in next? Well, it's a very good question. Uh, and I think it comes down to what you uh, just said. I mean, because the key part to make a pay and play work, I think, is the fact that, you know, the authentication with the banks are uh, straightforward, easy, and, you know, and as, as smooth as possible for the end consumer. Uh, and the fingerprints and all this type of technology make this happen. So it's really important, you know, that uh, banks keep innovating from this point of view and make sure that for end consumers, you know, transactions will be as, uh, as smooth as possible. Uh, going down to, to what countries, I would say the easier ones will, will be the ones where basically there is already a strong focus on bank payments. Uh, for example, uh, as a soft to bet, now we are applying for a local license in Denmark and in Poland, which are very bank-oriented uh, countries. And uh, I would expect that if, you know, a pay and play product is launched in those countries, it would be quite effective in a short amount of time. Then I would expect that in the future, uh, even countries that are not that bank oriented, like for example, Italy or maybe Spain as well, uh, will also jump into this uh, new product thanks to the PSD2 and open banking, uh, you know, um, innovations that are going to come from, uh, from, from the banks. I think that's really useful and you know we're very much ho hoping here that PSD2 and open banking APIs are going to make bank transfer more convenient, card schemes perhaps their dominance is going to deteriorate and people like Trustly specialising and leading the way with account to account payments really come through. Ariel did you have a perspective on, on, on that in terms of new countries or other areas where, where this would be interesting for, for an operator like yourself? You know what I, I will start in a way that uh was a bit concerning to me in the last few weeks when I saw the SGA, how they try to block or reduce, put restriction, whatever you want to call it, um, to try to control a bit the effect of the coronavirus, which apparently couldn't found. But they were trying to, to actually to limit the deposit level. If you think about that, guys, trust me, you, you really need to do some work in terms of compliance. Because the first thing that they will basically affect is any pay and play because pay and play player that deposit a thousand euro doesn't mean that he loses a thousand euro we know that he might withdraw at 900 beforehand or just two minutes ago so um, it has to be some work need to be done from a regulation perspective especially if you look into other regulated market otherwise you're going to find yourself bringing a very good product to the market but then seeing a seal coming from the regulation perspective so first thing that came to my mind and, and I agree with Alberto, it's all about um, getting the right access from the bank. If you get the bank on board and you have it uh, embedded in terms of player experience, they know how to use the bank and it's already there, then, then you have good potential to penetrate the market. Without that, it's going to be a long shot. But on the other hand, allow me just to be more positive. As you said, in the UK, there are many, many other ways today to do authentication over mobile or any other ways, which I think trustly and use it as well, uh, maybe to get to get an access and to all bypass you know the complexity that exists with those market. What I think it's important to to say, and and I said you said that in the beginning with the two different product. One product is a pure pen play, and the other one is a hybrid. 
when we launch a, a, a pure pen play, it's a easy, it's much easier, right? But when you launch a hybrid one, especially that you know that, that you have a brand that work in different restrictions. So if it's work in Finland, I will say, yeah, let's use the pen play. If it's work in the UK, we know it's not going to be the solution. So then you need to find a way how to do it, how to operate two different ways. And now we're talking about operational, it's going to be different, segmentation, data, everything. And this is where the complexity comes comes into place and, and um, I think that will be a challenge from operator perspective um, to handle until you guys crack the way to do it with other countries right um, so this, this is my I'll say five cents to this one thank you Ariel uh, uh, now you briefly uh, touch base on the changes in the regulation but also the coronavirus it would be uh, good to hear your views on, on how, the, how did this new situation with coronavirus affect uh, your business from the operational perspective, from uh, how you deal with your uh, employees, uh, but also from the perspective of different changes uh, that are uh, coming uh, from the regulatory perspective? Yep, so um, I mean, it's already been over 10 weeks, I would say, that we are at home. So I would say the challenge is not really a challenge, it's already a reality to some extent, right? But the beginning, I would, I would say, it was of course to shift everybody home. That goes without saying, everybody faced that, you two guys, so you saw it. But I think more than that, if you, for us as a management, that we taking care of our employees and really um, trying to, to see that they, they are um, in the right motivation, the right atmosphere, and, and, and we're taking care of them. When a coronavirus taking place, you, you realize that it's, it's something different. It's almost like a family that you really care to see how it's going to happen. And then you start to, to actually to handle or to address point that it's not even related to business. It's just the, the mentality of people, the, how they feel at home. You ask different questions. We are more alert in terms of surveys and so on to our employees. And that it was different and it was, it was a challenge. Uh, on the same time, the second challenge, of course, that comes with that is how you continue operate on risk, on support, and so on, all the other operations, even though everybody from home. So that was a very uh, a big challenge, but uh, to see how it's going to happen. If you ask us at the beginning, nobody knew if it's going to work or not, but you know, people know how to adapt. And apparently that, that was the key thing here. And we saw it also in Genesis. Um, we sent, I mean, quite early before even it was announced by the government, I think it was one week or two weeks before, we said to the guys, guys, go home. We prefer that you stay at home, stay safe. And we tried from that point to start to be prepared to this coronavirus. One of the things that we highlight internally, which more related to the business, was how we will make sure that we um, also keep all the responsible gaming tools available to the customers. The process are running on the backside, backside of the operation and everything. And, and at that point, when we start to address that, we were actually addressing the old question what are the regulation will have to say when the coronavirus will kick in as we saw that it's about to come right and what we did as a company we decided that we have to take a really we need to enhance the way we're dealing with the regulation you cannot continue like business as usual you don't know how people is going to react to that um, and therefore what we did if we have alerts if we have thresholds that manage those alerts if we have processes to identify a problem with any behavior that change and so on we simply change the thresholds we reduce them we've been a little bit more uh, i would say proactive in the way we manage it and and i have to say that i was very happy to see the result um, a few weeks ago that um, we couldn't see any increase in player value so for us it's a it's a very very important and, and not even on deposit level on average to see that the player did not actually lose control and they were able to play. And what we did, the, the measure that we took place or the, the tools that we actually enhanced were in the right time. And, and we were quite happy with that. So looking right now forward, I, I think that we are we able to say that we stabilized player-wise and business-wise. And um, yeah, now come the second challenge, how everything will go back to normal. We need to see how it's gonna happen. I think that's really interesting, Ariel. It's very hard for everyone to think about what the new normal is going to look like, but it's fantastic that operators are able to act independently of regulation to try and, you know, be responsible for society as a whole, view gambling as digital entertainment, and come through this with leaner, more efficient, more responsible, 
and ultimately, hopefully, more successful businesses in the long run. Alberto, I know your business is quite international in terms of where you have people across uh, Europe. Did, did you have any additional insights around how the business oh, is prepared? I can really relate to what Ariel said. I mean, it's uh, it was, I think, very similar for most of the operators on the market. I mean, the initial weeks uh, were quite scary, but scary not just for the virus, but scary also for the business. Uh, you, you didn't know what, how to actually, you know, make those adjustments that you needed in order to be able to offer the same type of services to customers from home. Uh, that was true, especially for some specific functions like customer service and stuff that are usually very office oriented. There are, of course, some functions that can be easily moved to a home setup, but there are some that are, you know, intrinsically more uh, office oriented. And I think it was a challenge. It was a challenge, but on uh, in the end, I think uh, th there was a very, very good response from all our people. I mean, the main focus of the company was really the safety of the cast of the employees uh, from the very beginning. So that was the key focus. And the idea was let's try to find a way to make a business happen in a safe environment. So the safe environment was the first. Uh, uh, important thing. Then, you know, in uh, in some weeks, everything adjusted a bit by itself, a bit by, you know, the commitment of all our employees. Uh, currently, I mean, as you said, we have offices across Europe. We have some situations where we slowly went back to, to the office for some specific operations in, of course, with all the precautions. Uh, and some other offices or some other uh, geographies are still instead working uh, working from home. So we have like a hybrid uh, setup at this stage. From a business pers perspective, uh, I, I can say we had a similar experience. There was a growth in terms of new players, but the behaviors of the existing players uh, were in line with what we experienced before. So we didn't see any uh, kind of uh, strange behavior following, you know, the, the virus development. It's really interesting and you know good to hear from operators that people aren't going crazy when at home so it begs the question you know is all this additional uh, regulation really needed you know if we're hearing from the operators that people are behaving responsibly uh, and gambling companies are enforcing that maybe the, the heavy hand of regulation you know doesn't need to, to follow and hopefully may not follow, follow as hard as, as required. Uh, Vass I think maybe uh, it's time for us to turn to the questions from from the audience. If you're happy with that, we can have a go at answering those between us. Yes, I think that, that that this was a very a very interesting discussion. We are slowly running out of time, so let's switch to some of those questions. I think that uh, th there were a couple of quite interesting questions. One that that maybe uh, uh, is connected to the. Uh, to the operators, the first one, do players have access to an account page where they can view transactions and bet history? I guess this is something that you guys would like to answer uh, in pay and play websites that you, that you have uh, uh, implemented with, with Trustly. Uh, yeah. Shall I start? Okay, okay. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, players have access to, you know, the same uh, setup that they would have in a standard username and password uh, setup. Uh, it's just that the mechanism to register and deposit are uh, different and are handled by uh, the Trustly Pay and Play solution. So, uh, from this point of view, there is no difference in terms of the user experience for, uh, for the customer. Ariel? Um, absolutely the same thing. Um, yeah, we, the account is available. He has all the tools that can uh, can be controlled for my account page. Um, it's still available for him. And of course, to the limitation that, um, of course, related to pay and play that could be there. Um, he will see historical transaction. He, he can actually maybe even um, accept bonus if there is and so on. So it's everything works as usual. The only big difference from a player perspective that it's um, it doesn't need to upload the KYC. Um, it doesn't need to um, uh, wait for withdraw time. It, I mean, those things that usually related to withdrawals are simply not there anymore. You just press the button and you get you get your money out. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Ariel. 
So on the next question, I think there's a, a couple of ways to skin this cat, but in case of a pure model, what happens if the user closes his bank account whilst he has the gaming account still open with an available balance? So player shuts down their bank account with Bank A whilst they still have a balance with John Bet. How can I get money back to a new account? Uh, do you guys have processes in place for that or would you like us to, to take that one? We have a process. I mean, in this case, if the player decides that he wants to withdraw to a different bank account, then we have to, of course, enhance our risk procedure, make sure we know that uh, we have a close, a close and a good understanding about who is the player and where the money is going to go to. So it's a bit more complicated because the, the entire closed loop that you mentioned, Vasily, is no longer there and we have to make sure that we know where the money goes. So AML perspective, we're going to check it, um, but we don't see any problem with that. The player will get his money, that's for sure. Yeah, same, same here. I mean, the risk profile of the customer changes. So basically, there are some additional checks that we need to, to perform on the customer. Uh, but uh, as uh, Ariel said, I mean, uh, we find a way to actually pay out the customer. I mean, this is, you know, a situation that uh, but if, if you can't really reopen the account to just, uh, you know, withdraw back the money to, to pay and play. So we definitely find a solution for the customer who just follow the standard AML and KYC procedures that are required by our, our uh, regulator in the country where uh, the customer is located. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting as well that whilst, you know, pay and play is very much at the forefront of what we do these days, Trusty is available as a payout method on the cashier of plenty of casino, sports book, bingo sites, whatever. And we have an account selector that enables the secure and convenient collection of player KYC and bank account information. So there are other ways our payout product can be used to support operators when it comes to securely making payouts to a new bank account. Um, in terms of which markets are on the roadmap to be added, Vasily, maybe that's one uh, you can give some insight into as you're a lot closer to the product team than I am day to day. Yes, I mean, uh, as we could hear from, from today's discussion, uh, uh, our pay and play operators uh, see uh, the availability of different markets is something that is required and very needed uh, uh, and we see things the same way and Trustly is is taking action to explore other markets where pay and play could be uh, launched as a product. Uh, we are currently working on multiple markets. Uh, uh, maybe maybe it's, it's too early to say which will be the, the next one uh, but it's important to mention that, that this is a process that, that takes uh, that takes some time because uh, first of all we need to identify the, the market how how much bank payments are used in that market even if it's a card market you need to have uh, innovative uh, or easy to use authentication methods uh, and that's why we believe that that psd2 and open banking will help uh, in some specific markets with fingerprint uh, and face authentication of transactions which will bring together with with creating a level playing field with credit cards uh, uh, by introducing the two-factor authentication that now they need to follow will bring us uh, uh, will bring customers closer uh, to to bank payments and then the second part of it uh, is uh, finding the uh, sufficient amount of KYC data because Trusty does not rely only on KYC data from the bank but we are looking for third-party KYC providers different public registries you know you have the spa registry in, in, in Sweden as an example and then the, the third but not least important uh, uh, least important uh, factor is uh, whether the market is regulated because uh, what we are aiming for and what we did you know the other markets is that we first went to the regulator presented them the product in order to get uh, their uh, approval for it. And obviously, US reg trust is not regulated by the gaming uh, regulators. Every operator that wants to launch pay and play, they need to get the proper approval from the regulator. But Trustly is always aiming to, to follow the rules in specific markets. And as, as uh, Ariel and Alberto both mentioned today, uh, we also think that, that regulators in different countries are uh, looking closer uh, into solutions such as pay and play because they are enhancing the way how the customer registration verification uh, uh, and other uh, similar activities are conducted and, uh, and and that has proven in 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 markets that have been launched so far so we're definitely looking into new markets and hopefully we will have uh, uh, more good news on that soon thanks Vas. so in terms of the uk you know we're very passionate that the way pay and play works and the way KYC 
information is given to the operators either from the consumer's bank account being the highest form of KYC it, some would argue you could receive or by working with local government or similar registries to provide that KYC information you know we're very passionate that it, it probably is the best possible way to provide KYC information to an operator for the purpose of account registration it is much more valid and reliable than manual data entry from a consumer. So I think the, the UK is something we've been taking seriously internally and something we want to do. But obviously, as Mr. Lee said, it will ultimately rely on bank transfer becoming easier in the UK and the UK GC um, having positive dialogue with ourselves and, and giving that rubber stamp. So I think it, it's something we're aspiring to, but we can't uh, pin down exactly when that's going to happen. And then in banner for casinos for Silly, maybe you want to give a closing remark on that and then we can say thank you and, and let everyone go. Yes, I'll try to be brief. As we said earlier, uh, in banner pay and play is a product that in this first uh, implementation, basic use case is allowing the users to, uh, to register using pay and play uh, before being redirected from affiliate to operator's website. So it does not matter whether they are using a casino, sports betting or lottery website. The next level of in banner pay and play would be combining it with the playing experience. Uh, so a uh, user will be able to register and deposit and then even play a casino game in that overlay that opens on top of affiliate website that is controlled by the operator, obviously, because affiliates are not gaming regulated. Just uh, uh, to make that very clear, uh, this product is, is compliant. Uh, with the gaming regulation. So there is a strong use case on, on uh, uh, in-banner uh, pay and play for casino and, and hopefully we will be able to see some new uh, live operators, maybe even Genesis or soft to bet ones very soon. Thank you very much, Vasily. Well, I just want to say thank you to um, Ariel and Alberto as well. As we say, you know, none of this is possible without you guys. So thanks for your uh, continued support. And I hope everyone listening as well is well during these uncertain times. Uh, I believe handing back to Fergus is how we say au revoir. So Fergus, back to you. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Um, and of course, thanks to obviously Ariel Roberto um, for a great hour. Um, a very quick look ahead from me uh, just before we wrap up. Next week, we'll be uh, looking at how sports bet operators restart marketing uh, when sports finally returns to the screen um, and that will be sponsored by Genius Sports and other levels um, and then that same day on the 28th of May a uh, second presentation from Canby uh, looking at percentage pay and how sports betting can fuel the US casino comeback so very sports focused next weekend or next week sorry um, I'm getting ahead of myself uh, and on that note I'll say thanks to the rest uh, thanks to the team um and uh, hopefully see you all next week so thanks guys thanks thank everyone. you guys bye-bye thank you bye, bye. thank you